Hi, I'm Lee, and welcome to my studio and YouTube channel where I discuss tips, tricks, and techniques for oil and acrylic painters. In this video, we'll explore six blue paints available to artists. All right, so let's look at these six paints. We have these two, which are staples in most artists' palettes, uh, which is Ultramarine. We have Thalo, Thalo Blue. Then we have some that are a little less uh, common. These less common ones would be uh, Prussian Blue, Cobalt Blue, Cerulean Blue, um, and then we have this one, which is uh, Yemen Blue. And this is a special one that we'll get to in just a minute. All these paints, though, are single pigment. Okay, so let's check out Yemen Blue. Yemen Blue is, uh, this one's from Gamblin. Uh, this is oil-based, whereas uh, I think, I believe you can get it in um, in acrylic from Golden. Uh, again, hard to find just because this is a uh, new pigment that came out in 2009. Um, put this box away. Um, look at the back of it. Gamblin has some information and a little history uh, about how the pigment was made. Um, speaking of how the pigment was made, it uh, is the the name of it is derived from yttrium, indium, and manganese. Boy, <laughs> boy, that's a mouthful. Uh, and since I just opened it up, I'm real curious to see how Yemen blue um, s stacks up against the other pigments in the blue family, like these guys. Let's check it out. Okay, so here we have all our paint out of the tubes. Uh, we're gonna take the, all these colors, uh, correlate exactly to these over here. Um, we're gonna take our uh, paint and uh, mix them up with titanium, just regular titanium white, get our tints. And then over here, we're gonna draw down and get our transparencies. Uh, just see how they look in glazes and whatnot. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so let's start with uh, ultramarine. This is French ultramarine synthetic. Um, so let's mix this guy up. Now this is what definitely one of the uh, definitely going to be a paint that a lot of artists will be familiar with, just because it's uh, typically what um, what you start with. You start with ultramarine and and, and uh, thalo right next to it. Um, as we start to mix it up a little bit, we kind of draw it down a little, and we see that it makes a really nice. Really nice sky blue. A nice, yeah, that yeah, looks nice. Nice, nice color right there. Moving along, let's move over to our thalo blue. Again, the second most common, I'd imagine, from uh, most artists. Um, take this guy and we'll mix them up. Now a little bit of this guy goes a long way. Um, this is a very high tinting pigment. Um, as any any person who just starts with uh, oils or acrylics knows, like, I mean, this is a very high tinting, uh, very uh, bold color, uh, very saturated. Um, you can see, like, that it's really, yeah, there we go. We can get some nice, yeah, you can see the difference between these two real, right off the bat. This one is a little, little uh, greener, that one's a little redder. Um, so um, that's pretty much how our, yeah, this thale looks nice. There we go. Moving on to our Prussian blue. Prussian blue is a, another high tinting, um, uh, saturated color. Not quite as saturated as um, Thalo, but uh, let's get started and see how this guy looks. Yeah, you can see how it's very similar to the Thalo, but it's it's even it's it's darker value has a slightly darker value than than uh, and. Um, but it's still very high tinting, high, uh, yeah. It's really nice for oceans, uh, like deep oceans. I've used it quite extensively for uh, some of my paintings. Um, but yeah, it's just a little bit different than uh, straight thalo. So let's let's keep going. Okay, so here we have cobalt blue. Cobalt blue um, isn't quite as saturated as these guys. Um, it's a little more expensive though. It's about a series five, which is um, definitely a little pricier than these guys. Um, 
but uh, it's a really nice it doesn't have a bias one way or the other uh typically speaking so but uh let's take a look see at this so here we go yeah you can see how this is a nice nice sort of right in the middle it's not, it doesn't lean red it doesn't lean green it doesn't lean it's, it's just sort of a nice uh it's a, lot, a little more forgiving i feel like than uh these other paints um um yeah there we go and you can see how much of a difference like this just seems like just a regular like just a blue it doesn't have anything like red like this guy or um or it goes greenish like these it's just a really nice color that i feel is very for forgiving so you move it one way or the other without having to uh, fight with it um, nice color really like that color okay so let's look at cerulean blue cerulean blue is actually within the cobalt family uh, true cerulean blue um, it's another expensive pigment um, about series five series six um, uh, it's um, um, let's take a look at it now it doesn't tint nearly as much as these other paints um, it's a very um, a very low tint strength so you got to be careful with your titanium when you're using it with titaniums or and you know you can just tell how little it tints by comparison um but this would be great for um something like the uh, uh right at the horizon of the sky because it has a little bit of a greenness to it um so if you have like uh, you know the cobalt right here at the very top of your sky and this at the very bottom by your horizon this makes a really nice these two combinations can quickly get you um, a sky that uh, reads very, very nice. So, Okay, so let's look at Yenmin Blue. Now, um, I have no idea how this is going to tint or, or, or glaze or whatnot, so let's, let's, uh, I'm very curious to see what this color does. Um, it's, uh, yeah, let's just get started. Okay, interesting. Right off the bat, we can tell it doesn't have a lot of tenth strength like the, the Thalos. Um, seems a little red. Well, leans a little red. Um, well, that's a nice color. A little more of that titanium in there. Um, oh, nice, interesting. It's almost like cobalt there. Um, Somewhere between like the cobalt and the ultramarine. Um, yeah, that's nice. Um, yeah, it doesn't quite, yeah, definitely not nearly as green. Yeah, it's definitely more like the ultramarine lenient leans that way, yeah. A little bit of cobalt. Not quite the cerulean. Um, well, that's really a nice color. Yeah, looking forward to playing with that some more. Okay, so let's put our tents aside and let's take a look at our transparencies. Now, this is ultramarine. Ultramarine right there is ultramarine here, just like, uh, so we're just going across the board again. Uh, let's start with ultramarine. Here we go. Yeah, this is a really nice blue. This is really nice. Um, uh, makes some really nice glazes. Um, yeah, this is really nice. This is one of the reasons why, I mean, this is very inexpensive paint. That's why we start off when we're, when we're just starting painting, you typically start with uh, Ultramarine and Thalo. These are fairly inexpensive. Um, but this is synthetic Ultramarine as opposed to um, uh, Lapis Lazuli, which is a far more expensive pigment, um, like hundred bucks a tube kind of thing. So, but, uh, but that's, that'll be a topic for another time. Um, uh, let's get started with our next color. Okay, let's check out uh, Thalo. Thalo over here is in our tents. Now let's see how it uh, performs in our transparencies. Um, yeah, all right, so uh, let's grab just a little bit here, draw it down. Yeah, you can see it's a very, uh, it's a dark value uh, straight out of the tube, but as you draw it down, you can see that it really gives you a nice, a really nice color. Um, yeah, just a little bit goes a long way on this guy. <laughs> oh, yeah guy up a little bit more um, and already you can kind of see how uh, the difference between these two where uh, ultramarine goes a little red this one goes a little green yeah that makes for a really nice color 
and a nice um, compliment, especially for uh, for split primaries. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, moving down the line, we have um, Prussian blue. Let's take a look at this. A little bit more. Yep, there we go. Look how dark this is. It's such a such a dark paper. It's almost black. Um, and then as you draw it out, as you as you pull it out of its uh, out of its uh, out of the out of the pile, you can just see it's like really nice color. Um, uh, you know, again, it's a little subtle thing between the phthalo and the the Prussian. Um, yeah, but that's nice. And you can see like uh, a little greener. It's a little bit greener. Um, you can really see it over here. But this uh, this is a really nice color. Um, I really like it. Yeah, that's a real beautiful color. Okay, now we're going to uh, move out of our uh, transparents and into our opaque and semi-opaque paints, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yep, this guy's uh, yep, that guy's opaque too. All right, so with these you have to do a little bit differently. You have to scumble a little bit because they, they they're not nearly as transparent here as these guys. Um, so uh, let's get started. Continuing down the line, we have cobalt. Let's draw this down. You see that it. Transparency doesn't come out quite, quite as fast. Yeah, as with our other ones over here. This is semi-transparent, so that kind of makes sense, right? And um, yeah, so you have to treat it a little bit differently than you do with the with the transparent paints. And um, yeah, you can kind of see it. Uh, it kind of works a little bit better over here than it does over here. If we're trying, uh, but let's, get, let's continue down the line. Moving on to cerulean blue. Um, let's see what this guy does. Now, this is a opaque paint, so there's should probably give us a little. Yeah, it gives us even less than true cobalt. Uh, this is, yeah, yeah. You can just see how much how it just does not give you much to work with with the transparency. Um, I mean, you really have to work at it. I mean, really, really try to draw it down. There's a threshold at which it just says, no, I'm not going to work with you like these guys um, at all. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit here. Um, so, yeah, uh, I would absolutely work with this uh, opaquely uh, rather than transparently. So, yeah, right there for sure. Lastly, we have Yemen Blue. Um, yeah, it's uh, this guy right over here. And let's draw this guy down. And pretty much as an opaque, we can appreciate that it, uh, glazing is not necessarily a strongest suit. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, this is still a nice color that you can, you know, scumble with a, uh, a little bit, uh, much like the Cerulean there. Um, I would just probably use this more opaquely than anything else. Um, but it's still a nice color. Um, yeah, you really have to work at it. Um, but, uh, yep, yeah, so that's Yemen Blue as a transparency. So these are all six uh, colors in the blue family. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next video.